Thank you, Anne, and thank you, Guillermo, for the opening words. Thank you all for coming here um, on the Monday morning. What, what is better, what can possibly be better than spending a morning, Monday morning in a museum like this? Um, I want, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the project came about and how it developed over the years. It started with um, a meeting with head curator Mar Borobia right after the Code Art Conference, June 2016, uh, jointly organized by Code Art the Curators uh, Network and the Prado and the Museo Tissenborn de Misa. And we discussed the idea launched by Guillermo Solana of the focusing on the uh, Rembrandt self-portrait and uh, Dutch portraits around it. So that's how it started. Uh, we, uh, we developed an idea and a storyline and it became a project for a large exhibition. What is always good is to start with the strength from your own collection. Well, take the magnificent self-portrait and um, I show you the image that you now see upstairs in the main galleries with all the portraits missing from the permanent display. Um, they are all in the show now downstairs. Um, so this is the core of the exhibition. Let's start with the, uh, your own strong holdings. And of course, we have the excellent early Ketel couple that opens the show. Right from the start, Professor Rudy Eckhart was my main sparing partner, special advisor, and I'm extremely grateful for his, um, for his uh, good advice. And also to our friend and colleague, Bas Dok van Hill, all are present here today for his uh, great ideas. And of course, my wife, Leonora van Sloten, who is also the curator at the Rembrandt House Museum. The storyline. There's never before been an exhibition dedicated on Rembrandt, uh, um, dedicated to Rembrandt as a portrait painter, uh, not even in Holland. So you can ask yourself how to do him justice and how to do the genre justice. The idea from the start was to combine Rembrandt with uh, other masters that, who were active in the field of portraiture. As again, we start with the Thyssen Museum's own holdings, the self-portrait here and the van der Helst portrait of a man at his writing desk on the right. Um, and then uh, we, would, we would be able to tell the, the, the story of how Rembrandt um, started as a portrait painter after his move from Leiden to Amsterdam in the early 1630s how he reacted on the, on the market, on the supply and demand, uh, the laws of supply and demand, and how he became less active as a portrait painter in the 1640s, whereas other painters, uh, specialists in portraiture, went on uh, and developed their own style. And Rembrandt had some influence, as we all know, on the many pupils, but these pupils um, um, and other painters, they started to deviate from that early 1630s style and adapting to changing taste. Um, and that's, you can, you'll be able to see that in the exhibition. By the mid 1650s, however, Rembrandt uh, is back on the market for portraiture, uh, possibly also due to his private uh, situation um, circumstances, and he will, he's, he will paint portraits uh, again from that moment onwards. Uh, there's a change, well, not so much a change in his style, but he, he's applying the, the rough manner style the, the, with the visible brush strokes to his portraiture, which is a style previously reserved for his tronies, the fantasy figures, um, and of course with the increasing chiaroscuro that we all so uh, like so very much of the late Rembrandt. Uh, whereas other portraitists like van der Helst on the right here, uh, they use a much smoother brush and lighter colors. That's very quickly the storyline that we hope to have made clear in the exhibition. It was also clear from the start that we wanted to include Rembrandt's etchings, portrait etchings, because he also reaches the, reached uh, the highest levels in this technique. And Leonora von Sloten will tell you more about this uh, later today. Then the process of loan hunting started. 
Um, as Guillermo already told you, we spent some good hours together, we some, did some trips together to get the, the best loans possible for this show. And of course, there are sometimes disappointments, uh, paintings uh, not available, etc. There was the Rembrandt year 2019, which make it, make, made it even more of a challenge to get the right works to make our story shine. But um, uh, on the other hand, Madrid be, being the only venue for the show, it made some loans quite possible. With, if you have more than one venue, sometimes museums or private collectors are reluctant to let their treasures go. There was indeed some great possibilities from, to, for loans from private collection, collections, as the Van Loo portrait of Jacques Loan is on the right, and a very late, um, discovery, rediscovery of the young boy on the shore playing golf, uh, both from Dutch private collections and magnificent paintings uh, hardly ever shown before in muse on museum walls. And there are two more from private collections. The Ferdinand Boll boy standing full length as a young adult and the portrait of the painter's stepmother, that's the Van den Eekhout's stepmother, that we could, were able to lend from, borrow from uh, a Dutch private collection as well. And what's more with her, we were able to reunite her with her husband, now living in Grenoble, the Musée de Beaux-Arts. And it's, um, they were already separated during the artist's lifetime, so it's quite astonishing to finally have them back together. And it's, it's great to, to have them side by side on the walls. Then there were works especially restored for the show, like this family group by Jürgen Ovens, who, believe it or not, is mentioned in an early biography as a Rembrandt pupil. Well, true or not, the painting has been restored and um, there is a new identification now attached to this happy family. And then the Fondant Temple painting, it's one of the very few royal <laughs> paintings in the show. It's uh, Princess Albertina Agnes and her children. And of course, at the start of the show, we have yet another great portrait from the Thyssen's own collection, the portrait of William of Orange, the other royal in the show. But the painting has been especially restored for this occasion. And then I want to show, yeah, and of course, the, um, the man from Hanover by Dujardin, then we are, in a, in a painterly style, fully, completely opposite to what Rembrandt does in the same years. It's by Carl Dujardin. The painting was restored for the show. And just uh, when you get there, look at the fantastic color that was done by Dujardin. I also like to highlight our last catch. It was in uh, Schloss Bad Homburg. It's north of Frankfurt where we visited the restoration studio with the help of the colleagues from the Städel Museum, and there she was, being restored, Margrethe Voss, uh, a painting that would normally never have been available because it's, uh, it's in the special wing, but the wing is on the go, undergoing renovation, so is Margrethe, and we can have her, have her here now, and she is really lovely. Um, then there's the catalog, Sorry, I couldn't find an image of the catalog cover yet, but our young man from Kansas City is, uh, is on the cover. Um, the catalog has become, I think, an important book. It offers you the new state of affairs in uh, portraiture um, uh, research. Um, we were able to gather a great group of authors, including also Dolores Delgado, who wrote a bi biography of Rembrandt, um, and... Um, yeah, and, and they all gave their very best uh, and to share it with you. It was beautifully designed and published by the museum's own publishing house, um, so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, since you decided to be here today, I don't have to convince you that portraiture, also for modern viewers, is a highly accessible genre because of its human nature. It is the materialization of a social process between the sitters and the artists, revealing the subtle balancing act between artistic challenges on the one hand and expectations of the client on the other. 
for the museum visitor, being the witness of this subtle relationship, portraiture can be most exciting, especially when you are allowed to relate to the people depicted. So this is why we tried in our show to have as many identified sitters as possible, with the logical exception, perhaps, of works by Rembrandt. That is to say, during the preparations, seven Rembrandt paintings have received new plausible identifications, five of which are in the show. Two portraits, two portrait pairs, and one standard bearer. And the last two lower rights on the, the ovals are in the catalogue. Further to these new identified Rembrandt portraits are two by Franz Hals and one of the gold and silversmith by the Kaiser. Well, there are several uh, heads now newly identified. And of course, then the family group by by Ovens, a new identification as well. And there is an re entire uh, rediscovery, the, the full-length portrait of Gerard Reins by Franz Badens, the painting unknown until recently. And now you are finally able to compare the full-length portrait to the Civic Art painting in the central hall of, of the museum. And further to this, we can, and it's still going on, we could possibly add this moving portrait of an elderly couple by Jacob Bakker. Um, rumor has it that they might well be the Mennonite linen merchant Francois Vincon and his wife Sibylle van der Berg, van Berg, because the initials FV are on the piece of cloth in the front of the painting. But still research is necessary to come to a convincing conclusion. And then is there the portrait of a man by Van der Helst, which I showed you, which has been restored. I, I'm asking myself, well, in, the, in the process of looking at this painting, could this man possibly be Rulof Bicker, who is in the portrait that's also in the show, second from left? He was painted by Van der Helst at least at three more occasions. So, um, well, you can make up your mind yourself, but even here we are still very cautious of saying, yes, it is Rulof Bicker. I think we have to study carefully what's there on the table and if it's possible uh, to relate this man at his writing desk to the, to the likenesses that I'm showing you here. So likeness alone is not enough, we all think, to say, yes, it's our man or woman. There's always a lot of work to do to make it uh, well, plausible. And there might be more to come, I don't know, during this very day. Who knows? Finally, I want to thank the, the Museo Thyssen Bornemisa staff for its trust over the past years um, into what I experienced as a great project. To me, it has been a fascinating time. Although the hard work has ended when the show opened three weeks ago, that is really only the beginning, because now the visitors have taken over. Thank you very much. Thank you.